Hi everybody, Ben here from Atlas Ordinary. So, I am using the leftover from my last um, pour, which was my pyramid mould. I'm not going to do too much for the moment, apart from pour these pens. These can be a little bit tricky because of the air bubble. And there's not a big space to get this um, jasmineite poured into. So we just have to start off a little bit slow. So this is a pen mould that I have put a blank pen into, well the the pen part of the pen, ink part of the pen. I'm going to pour these, They're, neither of these are full yet. So that's uh, half full. The trickiest thing with these is, is getting it all the way into this tip. Because you need it in this front tip more than anywhere because that is where all the, um, that's where all the pressure is when you use a pen. So I'm holding it this way, I'm squeezing it and hoping I've got all those air bubbles out of that tip. Now I'm gonna do the same with this one. Give it a really good squeeze. I can see little air bubbles each time I do that. So hopefully I've got as much as I can down into this tip area. Because if you, if you write a little bit hard and there's not enough in that tip, it just breaks a little bit. I do think there could be more. I wonder if I get my stick and just try to push. It's going to destroy my pattern a little bit, but I'd rather one that I can use that has an irregular pattern than one that I actually can't use because there's not enough pressure because I can show you I don't know where I put my other one um, no I must have put it away it just has that where the tip part of the pen is it, there isn't enough jasmine out there that when you put pressure it just kind of breaks so from here we're just going to fill these up now These are a little bit hard to get the pattern evenly anyway because of the way that they are um, having that pen insert in the middle of it. It can be a little bit harder because that changes your pattern as you go. Now I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to squeeze this end, try and get out any bubbles. Doesn't matter so much if you've got a bubble at that end. Now I'm just banging it to get out any bubbles. This has a little bit of an overflow, but that doesn't matter too much. There we go. So there's the two pens done. Now I've still got, <clears throat> I still have left over. So what I will do is I get myself a mold. This is my little go-to mold that I use, which is a B coaster. And we're gonna put that there. I'm going to stir this and make this a solid colour. So, scrape your cup. 
because when you pour out you get a lot of the darker color in one spot so let's try and get most of that incorporated in here now this is turning out to be a very soft gray I would like it a little bit darker so I'm going to add a couple more drops Probably going to add three more. It's three and a, and a tad. And then re-stir that in. Get that really well incorporated, that colour. So you just don't want to waste any of your jasmineite because you want to use this for projects. Now I'm pouring it out a different spot so I'm not catching all this color that's on that lip part. Now as this is thickening up, it gets harder to do into these thinner molds, but I should still be fine. So just pour it into a little stream and just go around your mold. If you get overflow, it's not that bad with Jasmine Eye. It breaks off quite easily if you do it within the first um, like day. So it doesn't self-level as easy as resin does. So you put a coat in to cover it and then you just go around and have a look to see where it needs more just adding more until your mold is full Sorry, I go quiet when I concentrate. Okay, now again, I don't want to waste any, so I'm just going to pour the rest into this tiny little mould. Just fill up these little bees. I like these little bee mould. It's just easy to use up my excess, and they're just cute little ornaments that I can stick onto if I make a photo frame I can just stick them on the edge to add a little bit of 3d interest to the edge of the frame if I got if I get some magnets I can just stick them in there while the jasmineite is setting and turn them into fridge magnets you want to use a decent strength magnet because you don't want these to hit the floor because they can break jasmine is strong but it does have a break point and dropping something so my floors are like concrete so if i drop in or hard tiles if you drop anything onto them they're going to break Just gonna have to reposition my hand so I can get the rest of this out to fill up that last little V. There we go. Now, with this, clean off that because I used that earlier. 
to poke into the other molds. To get all these bubbles out, as you can see, there's little bubbles that develop in certain spots. But what I tend to do is, before it starts setting, I go around and I just give it poke in intervals. And hopefully if there's any bubbles that are trapped in there, they either get pushed out or pushed to the surface. So I'm not pushing all the way to the bottom. I'm pushing close to the bottom, but I'm not pushing where I'm going to be piercing the mold or damaging the mold in any way. It's starting to get hard um, or thicken up a little bit. I can feel... You can see when jasmineite is starting to get to set because it starts getting a like a not a film film but it has some not as much flow to it now I will tap it so I just pick it up wiggle my fingers underneath if there is any other bubbles in there they will come to the surface hopefully but again if it has a bubble, it doesn't really matter too much. It's, it's homemade art. It's got to be a little bit unique in some ways. And same, the bees, I'm just going to bang them. Just, if there's any bubbles in there, they hopefully just come to the surface or not stay on the bottom edge okay and that's it that so that there is the pens the coaster and just a little bit extra into the, that v mold now i've just got to wait 20 30 minutes and i will be back to show you the end results okay back soon hello we are back so now time to unmold my pens and my coaster so this they're set but they're not super super rock hard so they're hard enough to unmold so the best way to unmold their pens is to just pull apart from the side so it's a little bit looser now these are quite it's quite a big area to kind of pull out of a mold so i don't find these molds can be the strongest at times so try not to actually rip it but pull that end out and then Virtually just wiggle the front out. And then that's done. So some of this excess you can break off now. Or you can, um, I'm probably going to have to sand this down a little bit. Because there is that little bit of overhang. But look how cool this pen is. And now we have a pen that is encased in jasmineite. So these look good for an office or just at home. Just something different compared to a normal pen. Um... I like it. It gives me a zebraish kind of pattern because it goes over the the insert of the pen, and they write perfectly fine. The only thing is, is once the pen is empty, it's kind of not usable anymore. But you can then, if you want to, is break it up into pieces and use it in another jasmineite um, artwork. So we'll just unmold this other one to show you what they're like. Pull that over. wiggle the front out so again I usually just break off any of those loose bits but then I'll have to come back and sand it later so we've got a tiny one little bubble there that's not too bad I think this one's got a little one little bubble as well if you leave it and they're quite exposed then as you put pressure on the pen it breaks the tip here so these definitely have to set before you use them but see how this has got a different pattern to it but again, they are awesome. I love these pens, they come out quite well. Now, the coaster. Easiest way is to just gently grab the side. This one's harder because there's so many intricate little um, gaps, but the jasmineite's set enough that I should be able to get it out without any damage. And there's our beam mold. See how there's a bit of overflow? I just push down on the base 
and a lot of that overflow just breaks off. Um, you're best to do this within a cap within an hour or so before it gets too hard. It will still come off, but um, it's easier to do when you do it at the beginning. But it just breaks off really simply, and then you're left with a really awesome coaster. These can go outside because, well, I put these under the patio, so they're not going to be in the weather and the rain, but um, they'll still work as a coaster in that situation, and they're cool. They kind of suit my outdoor area because I'm a horticulturalist, so um, I like everything animals and insects. Now, just for the excess that we have, these little bees come out. They are cute. It's just a little bee. That's it. It's just so I don't you waste all my jasmineite. They come out really simply. Again, leave everything to the air to harden for a while longer. And there we go. Really, jasmineite is really fun to use. It's simple, it's quick. This has been less than an hour since I started making everything or even mixing, and now everything's complete. And all right, here we are with the other bits and pieces. <clears throat> so here is my coaster, which is my bee pyramid, um, bee coaster made from jasmineite. So I have given the the excess a little bit of a scrape off. It's, I don't have a spare hand to um pick it up. I worry if I put this down, I'm going to make a mess. Yeah, I think I'm going to drop it if I try and do anything. But as you can see, that coaster has come out beautiful. There's a fly. I live in Australia. We have bugs everywhere. And here are my pens. So again, really cool squiggly patterns. I've got to sand off that excess that's down the bottom there. But these pens are ready to write with um, probably in about another hour once that um, Jasmine has got hard. Here's my cute little leftover bees. So these are just what I make out of the excess jasmineite. Um, once I've poured it into the mold, you get because it's near the end of the jasmineite starting to get thick, you get a couple of bubbles. So see, there's this one's got a bubble or two in his wings, but um, that just adds to the fun part of it. They are so cute. I've done these in different colors. I stick them around the place, so um, we just have a bit of fun. So my mold holds seven, so I just keep going until I run out. But overall, I could paint these up. I could just put them where they are like this. Um, but I often glue them to the sides of picture frames, so then they kind of have a little um, 3D effect. Because I'm a because I'm a horticulturalist, I take photos of my plants all the time. So I've got lots of photos with plants in it. So these little bees kind of just add that little bit of cool interest to them. Let me walk and see if I can get a flat surface so I can actually pick something up. My garden has got very full at the moment. I've needed to have come out and do some gardening, which I have yet to do. Let me go where there's some plants that might make it a bit easier. Come on, camera focus. There we go. Beautiful, nice and hard already. The back. Um, the front's always come out a little bit duller than the back um, where it's been exposed to air. But um, this is perfect. See how I've taken off all that stuff that was in between? I don't think it's focusing properly. But yeah, easy to scrape off, so that's kind of quite cool to do. Um, let me grab the pen. Here's the pen. See that little bit excess there? I just have to sand down. But overall, that's a cool little pen. Nice and hard. These, This is only about another 20 to 30 minutes since I did um, the last part of the video where I demolded them. So I've just left them exposed to the air. Again, see one little air bubble. It's not going to focus because of the plants down the bottom here. But um, that doesn't matter. I'll just sand that so it's not sharp. And I think there was one little air bubble up here. There. 
So you just don't want to try and get as much as you can away from this part because that's where the pressure is when you write with the pen. So that's why I spent a bit of time poking a stick in there trying to make sure that that is nice and full. If you were to use resin, you probably wouldn't have as much of an issue with that because it's a bit more flowy than the jasmineite. And my little bees. <laughs> Try and flip one over the other, flips back. There they are. Nice and cute. So I'm creating shadows here. They're cute. They're fun. And when you've got different colours of them, you can kind of just mix and match. But yeah, so that's it everyone. So I hope you have enjoyed this. So like normal, comment, like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you soon for another video. Have fun. Bye.